that bark is something else. Welcome back to Collecting Cars and today we're talking M3s, specifically E46 M3s. What makes them a great driver's car and what you should look out for if you're thinking of buying one. I'm off to see the guys at Everything M3s. We're gonna take a look at the standard E46 M3 and then talk more about this E46 M3 CSL. And not any CSL, because this has a manual six-speed conversion. Dara, Hi. good to meet you, mate. How you doing? You all right? Thanks for having us. Yeah, no problem. Um, so we've been invited by you to come down here to talk about E46s. We've sold plenty of those uh, on collecting cars. And what we thought we wanted to do today is come and speak to an expert, yourself. Okay, yeah. Um, find out a bit about why people love the E46 M3 so much, but then also what to look out for if one of us was going to take the plunge and buy one of these cars and then hopefully we can get out in the CSL and one of your other um, E46 M3s and just kind of have a little bit of a comparison talk about those cars so fine we're going to look at this one this one straight up yep have a little walk around so um, what is it first of all before we delve into uh, you know kind of what to look out for when you're when you're buying one of these, what is it about these cars do you think that sort of endears themselves to to all sort of petrol heads you know it's the whole thing it's it's basically the last naturally aspirated six-cylinder bmw m car uh you, you know we'll not we'll not see another naturally aspirated six-cylinder again unfortunately yeah um so the noise the sound the noise, from the exhaust the noise is a big thing isn't it yeah it really it really is but i suppose also that uh, you know it's it like you say it's that it's that era of BMW, isn't it? We've, yeah. we've gone into turbos now, so it's uh, a very different, very different feel. Yep. Um, and is it, is it, you know, just in terms of, you know, if you were to compare um, this to, you know, the, the more modern M3s, you know, it, 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 does it come down to like size and weight, or or is it more focused? Do you, do you think you're like, it's more about taking away the naturally aspirated engines? I mean, these inherently are a lighter model than the, you know, the, the newer cars. So you've got that sort of lightweight feel while, while you're driving them. Um, the, the balance is brilliant. You know, you're almost 50-50 weight distribution on these. Yeah. Uh, the power to weight ratio is not going to set the world on fire, but it's still ample to make the car feel really, really good. Um, just all round, it's it, they're, they're a really good package. Yeah. So let's talk a bit about that package then, because yep. we've we've got uh, rear wheel drive, yep. six speed manual box, mm -hmm. um, the engine. What 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 have we got in a, in your in your typical E46 M3? So um, E46 M3 runs the S54, which is a six cylinder inline six, um, naturally aspirated, 3.2 liter, yeah. uh, variable valve timing, known as Vanos. Uh, which we can sort of get onto later as one of the, the scary things the of things the car. To look out for, yeah. Um, but you know, um, yeah, Pre pretty bulletproof if you if you if you look after them by the sound. Absolutely, by the, by the sounds of things. Yeah. So let's have a look around this one. What's what what year is this one we, we've got here? I'll have to check. Uh, this one was <laughs> it's got, got on a private play at yeah, the moment. Yeah. <laughs> so no, November O two. Uh, so this is in uh, carbon black, which in the right light looks like a really deep blue. This is mega actually, because when I, when I wa walked in here a, a bit earlier, having a sort of sniff about, mm. I was convinced that this car and the one at the end there mm. were, were this sort of a, 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 a deep dark blue. But yeah. actually, when, when you look at it, you, you know, at certain angles, you can see, see that black. But on first impressions, it looks like this lovely metallic blue, doesn't it? But yeah. carbon black. Yeah, gorgeous color, absolutely gorgeous. Uh, pretty hard to keep clean like any black car yeah but uh yeah when it's clean like like this one is it's been really nicely prepped and yeah. polished uh, it just pops in a nice deep blue 
yeah. in the right light. Yeah, when when certainly when the light catches it under these under these lights, it yes. just looks inc looks incredible. Yeah. Um, so what is this what is this one having done to it at the moment? Uh, so this has come to us for an inspection to service. So all the oils, so it's uh, engine oil, gearbox oil, diff oil, yeah. uh, all the filters. So air filter, pollen filter, fuel filter. Uh, we will also do the belts. Yeah. We'll check all the coolant levels and the uh, the how. Um, how good the, uh, the, the antifreeze is still in, in the system. Yeah. Uh, and then also we'll, we'll take the, the cam cover off and we'll, we'll change or, or check and change the valve clearances if needed. Yeah, um, and what sort of mileage is this, is this car on? Uh, this is on around 50,000, 50, I believe. And, and should, people be, should people be scared around mileage? Or, you know, if, if, I'm, looking, if I'm looking at one at, at, at you know, 40, 50,000, or I'm looking at one that's, that's nudged up to, to a ton, am I, you know? Uh, the, the, there are obviously factors involved. It depends on, you know, if has the car been owned by 20 people, which have mm. all 20 have ragged it, yeah. has the car been owned by one owner or two owners or low owner cars? You'll normally find the low owner cars tend to be the much better looked after cars. Yeah. Um, but having said that, we've also seen like a one owner car, which was an absolute rock box. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, it's all about how the car's been serviced. Service history is key. Service history, yeah. Running well, in service is key as well. Yeah. Uh, so the, the, I think it's 1,100 miles that you have to do as a running in service from when they were new to bring it back to the dealer. And how are you checking? How can you check that? In, in the service book. So yeah. there's the, should be a, the little service record book with the car. Yeah. Um, and it's just in the first few pages, you'll have your brake service stamp and then you will have your running in service and thereafter all the rest of your service stamps yeah. so it's good to keep an eye on those and just make sure everything tallies in yeah so again like always first thing if i'm looking at one of these we see see it on the coming soon in collecting cars we see that description yeah we can look at look at see the the, the service documentation that come come with the car yep. and then the next thing we're looking we're looking around the photos of the car what what should i be what should i be thinking about when I'm when I'm looking at the photo, photos of the car if we, if we sort of take uh, things that you'd see uh, externally and then kind of talk about some of the things that we might uh, run into when I'm looking through the service history around some of the engine things that you might pick up on yeah I mean certainly on anything that was a higher mileage car um, you know I'd be looking at the front end to see if it was original paint if it's had st you know stone chips across the front I know it's always hard to see on pictures the full detail in everything, but you know from the outside you're looking for corrosion on your front wings. These are really, really common yeah. to go around here. You'll also have your rear wheel arches can tend to rust towards the the the, the, the lead, leading and the trailing edge. Mm. Um, should that should is that something mm. that um, I could say? Well, look, it's got a great service history, but there is some corrosion on onto onto these these arches mm. is that is that a massive job to attend to if I see the car I think look it's the right spec for me yeah got a good service history but we are seeing some corrosion around the sides here yep. what 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 am I what am I going to be looking at to kind of get that get I mean that sorted you can get genuine brand new genuine front wings still from BMW um, they're the only ones really that I'd recommend getting mm. um, sort of th sort of two and a half three hundred pounds a, a wing yeah. and then get it painted you know and, and then it's back to new and you'll get another 15 20 years of life as long as it's been prepared properly yeah so that's a thing to check but not necessarily something that should scare me off absolutely not yeah. it's not structural uh, which we can get onto later yeah but the cosmetic side of things it's pretty good certainly on the front end rear end however if the rear arches are a little bit rusty mm. that's when it gets a little bit more complicated because it is it's not a bolt-on wing like the front end is right that is a welded on panel yeah in integral to the structure yeah okay so then moving moving around the car anything else on the kind of externals that we kind of think there's a lot of cosmetic stuff which we're which we don't need to sort of worry too much about i suppose but no um you know cosmetically you know you can always have a high mileage car where the headlamps can be quite badly frosted yeah. over and stone chipped, gravel rash, all that sort of thing. Easy. But again, you can buy new lenses from BMW and that'll yeah. just freshen up the face nicely. Yeah. Um, these, but, ones, these ones look, look, look very shiny actually, I think, don't they? Yeah, yeah. I think they've been done. I they? think they have as well. Yeah. 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 Definitely. 
Very good. And then um, moving into sort of some of the more sort of structural things. So if we were, if we were sort of looking underneath a car yep. uh, like this one behind us here, um, what are some of the things that we, we'd need to kind of um, think about? With any car now, you know, they're like 20 year old car now. It's yeah. hard to imagine that they are, but yeah. 20 year old car plus, um, we are seeing parts of these starting to rot away. There are grommets in the floor pan at the back of the car, which the, the grommets, they, they just sort of perish. Let, you know, the water gets in, rusts the floor. Um, some chassis rails we see holding a lot of water as well. Mm. Uh, we also find like underneath these, these side skirts, um, where, the, where the little plastic rivets go in. We've seen quite a lot of corrosion in the holes that go through there. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, other things like, uh, well, the notorious boot floor, yeah. um, which will crack uh, yeah. and it will break spot welds. And, and, you know, if it's left for long enough, it Is that will... just an age thing or was that a problem with, with all the car, that, that kind of E46 It's generation? basically a feature of the car. Really? It's, it's every single car will have some form of defect in it. Yeah. You know, we've seen a 21,000 mile CSL come to us that needed the boot floor reinforcing wow. um, because it was cracked. Unfortunately, it had been sold as a car as uncracked, mm. but uh, under, you know, with, with proper investigation, yeah. uh, we, we saw it was, it was in need of repair. Yeah, in need of repair. And are these, are these things that, that are fairly easy to spot? Um, like, is it something that I'd be able to sort of see, see myself quite, yeah. quite easily without having to sort of have the car inspected? You can, you can get on the floor if you're, if you're willing to go and see that, you know, don't buy a car in the rain, yeah. <laughs> especially if you have to get on the floor to get underneath it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, the, there are places I can point out to you to look at, yeah. you know, which are key, you know, areas of the car that, that will give you an indication as to whether it needs doing. But yeah. more often than not, if the car hasn't been reinforced, it needs to be done. And again, that, that is that a, you know, that kind of job, is that, is that many hours to redo that or is it? Yeah, yeah, it's, tw yeah. you know, sort of tw 20, 20 to 30 hours worth of labor. Yeah. Uh, depending on how you want to do it, we have a package that we do, which is different to some other specialists. Yeah. You know, we sort of tend to, to do a, a complete job, which is involving restoring the, the underside of the chassis mm. with brake lines with subframe bushes and all that sort of stuff yeah. but you know you can get the bare basic sub you know reinforcement plates welded in spot welds done uh, and then there are also threaded receivers inside of the car that need repair or re-welding in yeah because they can break free how uh how how bad would it be to sort of leave one of those uh sort of if, you know if you said well actually that doesn't sound like a, a thing that i should be what too worried about um, uh, is that going to cause me problems if, uh, if, I, if I don't get that addressed? I mean, the, the SMG cars tend to break the floors quicker than the, the manuals. Yeah. Um, we've had a, a manual CS that came to us that needed a complete rear floor. So yeah. the whole panel needed to be replaced. Yeah. Uh, and that was sort of just to get the panel in and buy the panel was sort of four and a half thousand pounds plus VAT. Yeah. Yeah. So it's better to, to prevent it Prevention. Than, than fix it. Yeah, with all these things. And yeah. that's why it's so important to find one that's, you know, been well, well looked after in the first place. For sure. you're, you're just then sort of topping up, aren't you, as you go along, rather than having to do any sort of major surgery. Exactly. Um, yeah. that's, that's the main thing. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. So how, um, how easy is it to spot the cracks in the, in, in the boot floors if I was looking at, looking at one of these? Have you got something you can... Yeah, I mean, I, ideally, you know, get the car on a ramp, but yeah. you can get, get on the floor. Get a torch up in there. Yeah, get a torch on the, the rear left mount of the rear subframe. Yeah. So it is sort of in this area. I can show you on one down yeah, there, which has look. cracked if you like. Yeah, definitely. Um, so this will be repaired. But if we look into where the rear axle meets. There's a fold in the floor just there. Oh, I can see and that. And you see a hairline crack along the chassis floor. Yeah. So from that, we now know the car needs reinforcing. Yeah. But we, are, we have also found that even on the later cars, which have got a slightly, uh, they have more spot welds in the boot floor, we have found those to start cracking as well. So okay. it is a case of they all need doing really. Yeah. Another good place to look is the seam between this panel and the inner arch panel, you can see a bit of the seam sealer 
coming away and it is just just up in up in there along, oh, yeah. that, along that line yeah this one's not too bad but in bad cases the whole boot floor can just detach and oh, you've wow. got the whole subframe rocking around there are videos on youtube for it and it is pretty, pretty nasty. nasty yeah yeah oh yeah definitely avoid yeah absolutely <laughs> definitely fix yeah yeah <laughs> yeah definitely fix quite right because because you know they're, they're, they're work, you know, these cars you know being 20 years old there are going to be things that need addressing but once you get once you get a good one like they're just wonderful so it's well worth getting it addressed and, and getting it fixed absolutely absolutely um maybe another thing to mention if the car is taken out on a test drive mm. and you do hear a bit of a rubbing noise mm. um, you can find it on tight corners at slow speed it sounds like the car is rubbing mm. very often that's the differential yeah um, so these use a, a viscolock coupler rather than a conventional um, ramped lsd right so inside the clutches glaze over and they basically grip and let go in high what's frequency the, what's the difference so the viscolock coupler relies on a non-Newtonian fluid to, to slow down the, the slip of the wheels, which basically is essentially locking all of the clutches together. Yep. Uh, whereas a conventional ramped limited slip differential in the center are cross pins with some bevel gears and they sit into a cup on each side. And in each cup, there is, there is like a V shape and as, as there's a differentiation in speed, it ramps up and it compresses the clutches and locks the diff. This works in a very different way. And you do get quite a bit of noise out of these when they're worn. Okay. What's the kind of shelf life of something like that in terms of, is it, is it down to, you know, how many, how many miles we've done? Yeah. Kind of it's a good question because even if you leave these cars for a long period of time, we've had cars that super low mileage have come out of storage. Mm. Um, that the diff has been noisy and started rubbing and it's not because the diff is worn it's just because it hasn't been used they like being used yeah so we've had cars that have done you know sort of nearly quarter of a million miles on its original diff but has just been driven non-stop yeah that we've ended up putting a shorter ratio in but we've also done the clutches but it, they were actually not too bad and it was quite a quiet diff whereas we've had very young cars with low mileage and they've had noisy diffs so you know, use them really is, is the answer. But we typically see 80,000 miles on over is when the diff needs a service. Okay. Okay. Other things under the rear end to note would be, you know, uh, very often exhaust clamps can rot away. Yeah. Uh, the rubber hangers. That's no surprise on something of this age though, is it? It's, yeah. it's you know, just, just wear and tear on those. Absolutely. Uh, subframe bushes, you know, if you're getting a lot of movement in the rear subframe, it's because the, the rubber bushes that hold the differential and all the rear suspension, they can wear. Um, these are notorious for breaking rear springs as well. Um, they, they have what I call like a little pigtail. So it's, it's, a, it's like a barrel spring um, and, and they, they can break at the tops or at the bottoms. Mm. So if the car's sitting a little bit, you know, off when you go and yeah. see it, you know it can be that there's there's get a broken a spring get it on a flat surface exactly uh, other things maybe would be rear trailing arm bushes yeah. if you see a lot of very weird sort of tire wear um that there is a bush which is up in there which is the pivot for the trailing arm yeah. there there's another very common sort of failure point but again it's really hard to spot that sort of stuff i guess if you're just going to view a car on someone's drive <laughs> yes so <laughs> yeah absolutely floor pan grommets these grommets here tend to rot out uh, and like the floor will just literally rot around there oh, really? on both sides so that's yeah. definitely something to look at if you're going to go and buy one as well yeah are they are they costly to replace those the boot pa the floor panel yes absolutely but we we actually have uh we we get this relief this exact shape fabricated yeah. Uh, and, and weld the section in it requires removing the interior yeah. you know in that area but uh, yeah it, it, it it's not too big a job not too big a job yeah 
Well, I mean, it's, it's great to get actually to get underneath one of these cars because yeah. it's not you know you don't see it too much you, I guess you don't you don't see it too much you, know, you spend all the time looking in the uh, the engine or, or kind of the exterior of the car but yeah. very very few opportunities to get underneath it and understand what what a, what an M3 looks like from underneath from underneath yeah, yeah absolutely it's, it's, it's really cool to sort of just to see it all really yeah just look at the look at the exhaust and the yeah um, high quality stainless steel exhaust these yeah. these last it's all the hardware that holds them together yeah it's what it's what perishes so you know your catalytic converter bolts go yeah the clamps at the back go but that the actual exhaust itself yeah they're, they're, they're Re really robust good they? quality stainless steel yeah. exhaust so yeah that well this one came in for a inspection two service hmm. Uh, we did a leak down test on it. It turned out that the head gasket was, what's, was blown. What's the difference between one and two? So inspection one is just the sort of the, the minor service. Yep. So it's it's engine oil uh, filters and yep. a couple of other bits and a full look over the car. Yep. Whereas the inspection two is all the oils, all the filters, valve clearances, cam cover gasket, the belts, the coolant, the brake fluid, yep. everything. Yeah, amazing. It's a hell of a lot cheaper to keep up with the servicing than it is yeah. to replace the engine or have it rebuilt. So, yeah. you know, keeping on top of your servicing, change the oil every year, yeah. do your brake fluid every two years, yeah. do your air con system every year or so. Yeah. You know, it's, it's worth keeping on top of it because otherwise the, the, yeah. the bills on these are big yeah. when they go wrong. Steady maintenance. Exactly. And what's next in terms of things that, things that I should kind of be looking for? Um, I mean, we can talk about the engine now if you like. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah Obviously, sure. uh, that- Should we open this up? Yeah, can it, do, yeah. It. So um, we'll go into the engine. This is sort of mid-service. Yeah. Uh, so it has just had the valve clearances done. Um, so on the front of the engine, we have the Vanos unit, which is the variable valve timing unit. Yeah. I can show you one of the, one of the, the units yeah, if, yeah, if you're to, interested. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Love to look at one of those, yeah. So, um, this, this is one that we've had aqua blasted, you know, which will go on to, you know, an, a, a nice sort of show engine. Yeah. But the, it, the way in which this works is that you have a, a, an oil driven piston here and here. And as they go in and out, there is like a helical gear. Yeah. Which basically, as it goes in and out, it will advance and retard the camshaft timing through oil pressure. There's also an electric solenoid here, which will basically govern the path that the oil takes to drive the piston in and out to adjust the cam timing. Yeah. So that's a bit of a weak point. Um, there are bolts which can break off on the end of the camshaft. They, they fret and right. can snap. Um, there is also a drive. Is it just wear and tear with those or is it, is it just? It's yeah, wear and tear. It's, you know, I think the bolts that were spec'd originally weren't quite up to the job of certainly the endurance of uh, you know of, of, of the engine yeah. so there is now a, a, an upgraded bolt that BMW supply yeah. um, there are also um, off the so that it sits in in the car like this yeah. off the exhaust uh, camshaft there are two lugs that drive an oil pump drive for this Vanos unit they can break off the end of the um, that the hub on the end of the the, the camshaft um, so there's a few little bits that can go wrong on these. Yeah. The seals inside can go hard and they lose their pressure so that it's not working at its optimal sort of efficiency. But uh, yeah, Vanos, that's one weak point. Quite a common thing. Yeah, pretty much every, yeah. every car. There, there, there are upgrades now. There's obviously BMW's bolts, hmm. um, the pump drive, the oil pump drive. We, can, we, we machine at 90 degrees to the original two holes a slightly tighter tolerance hole. Yeah. Um, there are then, you know, better seals to put in yeah. and, and rebuilt solenoids which don't fail. And, you know, there's various bits and bobs we can do to bulletproof it's, it. It's amazing all the, uh, you know, just all the things you can get hold of now for these sort of car, these cars that are 20 years old. Yeah. Like everything's moved forward yeah. and the parts you can get and the improvements that are being made yeah. just to keep these cars, well, make, it, make them better in a sense, actually. A absolutely. You know, are, are there parts now that are becoming more difficult to get hold of from the manufacturers? Yeah, absolutely. There's, there's various bits, you know, with all of the cars from this era, there are bits and bobs just falling off the, off the radar now, which, which are no longer available. You know, yeah. um, I don't think you can buy 
a complete bare engine for these or a complete you know engine crate engine from BMW yeah from these anymore so you're having to come to specialists like yourself who yeah. are kind of and we can rebuild and them rebuilding them themselves exactly yeah. yeah and does that apply for um you know as well for the mechanical parts as the cosmetic parts of the car as well yeah there are certain things i mean you know if the, there are plenty of the standard m3 second hand bits on the market yeah but then you know there are some csl parts which are highly sought after there is like you know the the diffuser that's a standard m3 diffuser but there is the the csl one which is, is carbon yeah. fiber no longer available yeah um i think there's only a couple of front bumpers for a csl left so we're we're already making the diffuser yeah and we're going to look into making a full replica yeah. bumper which will be a one-to-one -one fitment you know Amazing. good enough to fit on a on a genuine car yeah because at some point you know with, with with bumps and scratches along the way if you if you're using your car as it's intended absolutely you might you might want to you might want to refit it or yep. you buy one that needs one and that just be a real pain having to then go and hunt these things down. So it's, cool. it's great that people are making them. Yeah, themselves. yeah, well, it's, an, it's an iconic car and we want to keep them on the road. Yeah, brilliant. Um, another thing to mention is these are quite known for head gasket failure. Yeah. In the later stages of the, you know, sort of, I'd say between 80, over, uh, over 80,000 miles is kind of when you start seeing head gasket failure. Mm. Luckily, they don't mix oil with water. They break between the cylinders. Right, okay. um, so what happens yeah. is, is uh, the air fuel mixture will jump over into the adjacent cylinder um, and pre-ignite. If, if you leave it for long enough, you know, you'll, you'll start damaging pistons, ring lands on the pistons will, mm. will explode, you'll score the bores and you're into a world of pain. That's pretty catastrophic. Yeah, it's not worth. <laughs> it's not, not ideal. It's it? not worth entertaining. No, no, no that would be that would be dreadful. And are there um, are there any kind of like early warning signs that you can you can look at if you if you've got yourself into one of these cars uh, and I'm, I'm out I'm out for a drive? What would be the kind of symptoms that you might kind of feel or hear? Yeah, well, you'll you'll hear pre detonation. So you know, if you're doing sort of twenty miles an hour, thirty miles an hour put it into, into a, a higher gear fourth or fifth and give it full throttle and you should hear the pre-detonation. It almost sounds, it's like, I don't know, marbles in a tin. Yeah. You can hear it pinking. Yeah, okay. And uh, off that, you'll know that the head gasket is gone. Best thing to do is when you come in for like a, an inspection one or an inspection two service, is ask the mechanic to perform a leak down test. So not a compression test, a leak down test. Yeah. Um, so you'll, you'll charge the cylinders up with compressed air, yeah. move the piston to top dead center and, and, and check for leaks either through valve seats or head gasket. Yeah. If it's the head gasket, you'll hear it from the adjacent cylinder. Okay. Anything else in, in here that we should... Um just your standard bits and bobs on the engine really you've got you know two 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 auxiliary belts on the front of the engine yeah you can visibly see them if you go to buy a car you can just shine a torch down have a look at yeah. the, the 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 six kp belts that are on there if they're cracked um so yeah have the, 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 these have actually just been replaced as part of our inspection two service um, but you look on the v of the 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 rib of the belts and um you know, if they're cracked, they, they should really need, they need replacing. There are other areas like the timing chain tensioner, um, sealing washer, crush washer, um, they tend to leak. Yeah. The Vanos bodies can leak. There's like a, a steel gasket between the Vanos and the cylinder head. Mm. They can leak. So you'll find a bit of an oily mess around this area. So again, without having to get the car up in the air and get the under trays on, you can shine a torch down onto the under tray. If it's absolutely caked, you know that it's got a bit of a steady weep. Yeah. If it's shiny, you know you've got a proper leak. Yeah. So okay. what a good thing to look out for. Yeah. Okay. Um, radiators at the front, have a look, just sort of see that, you know, the first radiator that you can see is your air conditioning condenser. Yes. Yeah. The one at the back, which you can't really see too much, is the coolant radiator. Um, and then you do have your, your oil cooler is right down at the bottom oh, yeah. through the grill. Yeah. So the oil cooler and the AC condenser take most of the stones. I was going to say, yeah, take most of the hits, don't yeah. they? Yeah, so they're always worth having a look to see if they're intact, leaking. Yeah. A lot of the time, you know, you'll see a bit of a sweaty mess of, of oil around the oil cooler. Um, or even if, um, 
if it's on the AC condenser, you might see an area where it just looks a bit darker. Um, you can, or you do, we fit or fill the AC system with a like a fluorescent dye. Oh, so useful. you use a, a little black light, you yeah. shine it onto the radiator yeah. to see if it has a leak. But with regards to the, the AC stuff, just turn it on. If it's cold, it works. <laughs> yeah. You know. yeah. Hello, Enzo. Hello. Are you coming in for your little bit? <laughs> <laughs> Dog not included. <laughs> I'll just pop this back. Yeah, yeah, I do. I was having a look at these th these lights. Don't think they're were they were they standard those xenons? Yes. Six were they? Yeah, they came they came oh. with an option of halogen or xenons. Yeah. Um, these are xenons. Yeah. Xenons. Yes. Yeah, look very nice. Yeah. Super clean on those ones. Yeah, I think these have been relensed, so they are unbelievable. Yeah. Good, very nice condition. Yeah, um, it was such a such, such a smart face to this, wasn't it? You yeah, know, it's a very clean look. Timeless design. It is very good. Yeah. Yeah. Very so good. Furniture in the engine bay. You've got obviously air filter. Yep. Oil filter sits there. This is your auxiliary air pump, which is for emissions. It's pre-cat heating for when you first fire the car up. You'll yep. hear that running. Um, expansion tank. Yeah. So this is engine coolant. So obviously making sure when 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 the car is cold. Just open this up, have a look, see the levels all right. That sh is just a touch low, so that will just yeah. top that up. But that should sit just, just, just sort of there. Just sort of in line. You yeah. can see on the, on the header tank, they have actually given you a diagram of where oh. it should sit when it's cold. That's quite handy. So that's always good to check. Yeah. Uh, BMW should run the standard blue coolant. So it's always worth having a look inside and seeing what color it is. Yeah for the right uh, cooling properties and also anti-corrosion properties inside the engine because of okay. the cast iron block. Right, yeah. Um, obviously, you've got your uh, brake fluid, always worth having a look, just make sure the level's all right. Maybe even take the top off. See what the, on the just inside. Just have a look, see, yeah. see what the fluid's like. Nice this has had clean. a full brake bleed with the inspection too. It's nice and clear. Um, and obviously you will have, you should have stamps in your service book for every brake fluid service, yeah. it often gets missed out. So yeah. keep an eye on that. Fine. Let's pop this down. We'll take a look on the, uh, the interior. So what are the, um, what are the key things when we get onto the inside of the car, looking at the interior of the car um, that we should look at? And also, what are the sort of key differences between the standard E46 M3 and the CSL, which we're going to go out in later on? Sure. Um, so. The standard M3, typical, you know, sort of driver's seat bolsters, bolsters. can wear out. Yeah. Uh, you can have a bit of de-threading of the bolster where it's split in two. You can have the sort of the, the, the leather can wear away. Um, you know, that there are really good guys out there that can, can reconalize and re-leather these seats. So, you know, that they can be salvaged even if they are in a really bad state. Yeah. Um, so again, not, not, not something to particularly be be turned off by or worried about because those can be those can be sorted not really yeah. no um, a good upgrade for a, for an e46 m3 is actually an aftermarket seat you tend to sit on these rather than in them right um, as the standard m3 seat you'll see in the csl you sit in them a lot nicer yeah. but they are very sort of upright there's no adjustment on on the, on how they recline no. it's a fixed seat um, steering wheels can wear out the leather wears out you know yeah. it's you know you can see if someone's been using a lot of hand cream a lot of shine uh, on those yeah a lot like. of shine <laughs> a lot of deterioration of the leather uh, same with the gear stick as well um interior wise on these though that they are pretty pretty good they are pretty good yeah yeah, yeah that era was 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 really nice actually the the, yeah. the quality yeah. of the fittings it was all very very sturdy wasn't it absolutely unlike the uh, the mercedes of the of this era when they sort of really had trouble didn't they? they all got very plastic the bmws were were really solid i think kept it nice yeah, yeah. i have seen cars from hotter countries we've had a couple of cars come over from you know singapore um and uh, you know malaysia and and we we have had like the um the headliners have sagged oh right so just, just heat yeah absolutely yeah. um so it's it's definitely worth when you're having a look at the car don't just look down at the interior look up look up as well have a look at that headliner and see that you yeah. know 
it is all still up there and not hanging down. Yeah. You know, for the people in the back, it's pretty annoying. Um, this one's got this one's got a sunroof. Yeah. Um, those those aren't quite those aren't typical, really, are they? It's quite is it quite rare to have sunroofs? No. Have a sunroof? No, the sunroof the sunroof is is kind of I don't know what the ratios are between oh, sunroof and non sunroof, but yeah. yeah, we see loads of them. Um, and seals pretty. Seals are all good. right. You have got drains, you know, there and there. Sorry, well, it would be there and there yeah. because of the cassette where it goes back. Um, I would, if you're buying a car with a sunroof, open it up and see it all works all right. Have a look in around the gutters and see is there dirt, is there debris. Mm. Have a look around the, the headliner to see if there is any kind of residue, mold, anything that looks like water is coming in because... Um, if the drains are blocked for whatever reason, you'll just start leaking water into the car and, and it's just not going to do any good. Yeah. And um, just, as a, just as a kind of, uh, you know, do, is this a car that's going to behave well, you know, as a, as a daily, if I wanted to buy one and, and daily, is it just as it is as a, as, as a weekend toy? Absolutely. Um, yeah, brilliant daily. Um, you know, it's got a big boot, you get all the shopping in. Very practical. You can get two sets of golf clubs in there quite happily. Yeah. Uh, it's got Isofix in the back, so if you do want to have two kids in their chairs, no problem. I'm going to stick my fingers in my ear because I'm meant to be buying an estate car. <laughs> <laughs> well, Don't tell me about the Isofix. We'll build you an E46 <laughs> estate M3 if you like. That would be amazing. I'd love that. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, it's comfort really. That the front front seats are obviously your typical BMW driving position. Really comfy, really engaging. Yeah. Um, so yeah. That's well, uh, on that note, should we? Uh, I'm just looking at the CSL out there. Should we get out and give that give that a drive? Yeah, let's do it. So where did you where did you pick this one up from? How long have you had this car? Yeah, this has come from local local guy, um, and it's it's uh, it's been with me for a year and a half now. Sixty six thousand miles. That's that's pretty low, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's, it's fairly. Yeah, considering the age of the car, it's on an average it's not done a lot over so a year. What year is this one? Two thousand. It's an 04. Two thousand and four. Yes. Very good. So that is that towards the end of. The production of these, or was yeah, that, yeah, yeah, okay. they were 2003 2004 production, yeah. And originally, well, this, this was the, the, the auto box, the SMG. Presumably, yes. And then we've the, got a six-speed manual. Exactly. <laughs> so the cars were only produced with the SMG box, which they're all right. Yeah. There's nothing terrible about them, but I don't like them. Yeah. Uh, uh, what is it? What is it about them that, that uh, you don't particularly enjoy? Um, they're just you, you're not fully, fully in control. Yeah. Um, when you're on the go, when you're when you're driving hard, they're they're great. The blip on the downshift always sounds lovely. Yeah. Um, Is it just a bit of bit of delay on those sort of? Uh... A, a little bit, you know. Some people say, oh, you'll never change as fast as a as an SMG yeah. gearbox in an M3, but I don't think that's really the case. Yeah. Um, if you if you're canny with what you're doing, you can you can get up through the cogs pretty quickly. Pretty quickly. Yeah. 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 I think there's a lot of lot of people sort of, of of our age, perhaps that, or you know, who just have a certain driving style where they like to use the engine to do a bit of braking, and it inspires them with that much more yeah. confidence. Yeah. Um, whereas the uh, sort of the autos, certainly the early sort of single clutch boxes, yeah. you sort of you do have that quite clunky sort of quite jerky quite clunky. Jerky. yeah you know yeah. the the, the SM, these these in smg 
in their most ferocious shifting mode. You can hear the rear axle moving around a lot and thumping. Yeah. Um, now it's manual. You can pretty much change as hard as you like, and uh, and you, you don't really have so much of a a rear axle clunk. Yeah. From from a, from a, a hard gear shift, you know. If we go. BMW's always going to sound great, aren't they? But, Absolutely, uh, yeah. It's, you know, a really, really nice engine. Great, big upgrade from the S50 V32 that was in the E36 Evos. Yeah. Uh, when the S54 came in, it was pretty, pretty groundbreaking sort of engine. Suit, suit the manual box going down through those gears like that. Yeah, it's oh. lovely. That was amazing. Let's go and get into the other E46 M3 and just see as like a back-to-back -back comparison how they compare. Okay. So the standard in inverted commas. Yes, E46 M3. Indeed. Are they going to be like chalk and cheese or are they closely re related? That's the thing. I mean, this, so this is this is going to be you know. First of all, it's much more sort of daily comfort, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You know, definitely. in the cabin, you can see you can see straight away lack of carbon, but much more sort of uh, comfortable and luxurious. Yeah, you've got an armrest on your your yes. passenger outer elbow. Yeah. This one doesn't have an armrest in the middle. Yeah. It can be deleted. Yeah. Um, but yeah, a few more creature comforts. You can have a cup holder in the centre console if you want. That's it, isn't it? Th th this, era, this era of cars, none of them had cup holders and suddenly become obsessed it's with our coffee. Thing. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So, um, All right. right. Well, let's crack on. Let's yep. uh, see how it feels and you can kind of talk us through um, some of the main differences. I mean, the, the big biggest one sort of being the weight, I suppose. Yes. Um, a huge, huge change as we go past that other CSL, looking at that. Oh, yeah, lovely. Yeah. So th this is obviously 185 kilos heavier yeah. than the CSL. You can feel it. Plus, plus a good 80 for me in the passenger seat. <laughs> yeah, good 100 for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a, it's a bit more, you hear it's a bit more, uh, a bit more sound deadening. Yes. It's a lot quieter. Yeah. Yeah, but um, I imagine once we get out onto this road here, it's still got that love, lovely rasp. Oh yes. That's the thing. Interesting. So, yeah, it's still there, isn't it? Absolutely. Yep, the rasp is still there. Now, I mean, obviously, this car has got <laughs> 231,889 miles. I love it. I love it. What an enthusiast car that yeah, is. Then. Yeah, it's chalk and cheese in terms of the 20,000 mile silver CSL that we've got. Yeah, or chalk and cheese in terms of uh, well, price as well, because yeah, yeah. what, 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 the band that these sit in, uh, much more much more affordable for the everyday enthusiast, kind of you know, anywhere between you know, 15 and 20 grand. And, yes. and then the CSLs, what are they kind of, what, are, what range are we in there? It's, uh, no cheaper oh. than sort of 50. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you'll, you'll struggle to pick one up for under 50 now. So a very different thing, I suppose, in terms of the size of your wallet and what you're going to use them for. Yes. I suppose the thing with with these these are the uh, that they're just so much more sort of 
usable every day I suppose I mean, yes you can get out in the CSL and, and uh, drive it every day if you so wish but um, you'd probably be afraid to pile on the miles sadly yeah definitely definitely um, but you know it's still you're not like, yeah, yeah you're you're really not missing out are you I mean it's um it's a tough argument to make why you'd spend that spend that extra money really isn't it sometimes yeah a little bit I mean the engine's phenomenal the only thing that you know it's just down a few horsepower and doesn't have the the enormous roar of that carbon air box but it's still in essence the same car just a little on, on, a, on a less strict diet really and I'm sure there are there are plenty of things you know we said uh, said earlier on that you know, the, the CSL is, is so very different in terms of the things that were done to done to it sort of in, internally around the engineering and the parts but surely there's quite a lot you can you can do um, not only with um, improving these with OEM parts but also with um, stuff that people like yourselves are supplying nowadays as well yeah like, absolutely can... yeah it's well it's amazing really because there are still new parts coming available for these cars which are 22 years old yeah. you know uh, you, there are still people developing stuff you know we, stuff we've developed that carbon diffuser the CSL one to one replica there are uh, other companies recreating the carbon air box yeah um, you've got companies are making trim panels for these you know it's 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 a real cult it's a whole new industry it's kind of just popping up around yeah. all of these cars absolutely um, and I can understand why it's um, yeah I, I did think that I, I thought that I was gonna you know I, I absolutely love love the CSL but sitting here I, I you know I, I think you still get a really really fun experience a real fun drive I mean it's better in that seat obviously but, yeah but, but even even here it's uh, puts a smile on your face absolutely yeah I mean it still has that feel yeah. but it's just not quite as sharp as the CSL because of yeah. the um, the difference in the steering rack yeah um, the wheels are heavier so it has you know it's it's there, there's there's more weight to for the engine to turn yeah. you know more weight for the steering to turn um, but in essence it's still same same but different same same but different yeah right here we go oh lovely it's still got it it really has that's enough isn't it I mean yeah you know you don't need any more than that no. I, I mean it's great it's slow in modern day terms yeah but I mean on a road like like this it's, it's plenty for most people to have isn't yeah, it yeah absolutely. you know it's engaging in a different way i mean of course that the, the modern stuff is is quicker more brake horsepower but you know most people aren't handling that or or if they are they're they're driving yeah like a prat <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah so i do i do think these sorts of things are, are a real sweet spot yeah it's a great um, little sports car really uh, yeah love to get into one yeah. Very nice still, isn't it? It's not as raw as the CSL, but it's still... It's still really good, isn't it? still really good, yeah. yeah. You know, it still picks up. I mean, the CSL is just like instant, but, you know, you only have to put a bit more of a, uh, uh, you know, a bit more pressure down on this one, and it's still there. It still yeah. makes that raspy noise. Yeah. Yeah. We, we fit a lot of... Uh, different final drives to these so we we change the the differential gear ratio yeah so these run a 3.62 as standard which is 3.62 turns of the prop shaft to one turn of the wheel right we do we put a, a 4.1 in which is basically like it's lowering the top speed but increasing the acceleration yeah so you're gaining 400 rpm at 70 miles an hour but these cars are no longer really your motorway basher that you're going to drive to, you know, on a business up, up you know, for hours and hours and hours. This is now a fun car, a weekend yes. car. Yeah, so, which, which is what most of them will probably you know, spend their time doing, to, yeah. to be quite honest. I don't think there are that many now that are, Yeah. I mean, I dare say, but most people are going to have this as their kind of their, their second car, really, aren't they? Yeah. Well, I mean, th this in its current 
geared format, you'll you can you know if you really push it, you can see over 160 miles an hour in it. I've seen close to 170 in my blue one. Yeah. Um, but with the with the, the different final drive, you don't need to be doing that speed. Yeah. But with a different final drive, you, you lower that top speed, and yeah. it um, just gives it a bit more. Uh, or get up and go. What was, was it? Were they all limited to 155 originally? Yeah. 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 Fair enough. I think my limiter fell off. Yeah. No, it does does seem like it might have done. Yeah. yeah. Rusted away. <laughs> what are these like round roundabouts in the way? Brilliant. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. I bet they are. Uh, DSC off. A lot of fun. Give it a bootful. <laughs> Uh, look out the side window. They're brilliant. <laughs> oh, I'm going to be looking through coming soon. I'm collecting cars. Looking for the next one of these that comes up. Might you might see one of mine up there soon. Might have a, might have a one, cheeky bid. There's one in the garage that might be on there soon as well. Miles? Um, Who cares? I'm sold. <laughs> <laughs> So the E46 M3, whether it's in the standard format or the CSL, is always going to be a firm favourite. And now, thanks to Dara and the team at Everything M3s, we know what to look out for when buying one. Which one am I going to take home? Well, I think it's a pretty obvious question. But if you're looking to buy or sell your E46 M3, then head over to collectingcars.com. Thanks for watching.